This conference will now be recorded. This conference will now be recorded. Is it audible to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, I'll start the class. Today's topic is just disjemnum of ovary. So what is disjemnum? It is a germ cell tumor, which is arising from the germ cells of the ovary. So what is a germ cell? Germ cell is any biological cell that gives rise to gametes of an organism that reproduces sexually. So germ cell tumors are composed of histologically different tumor types derived from primitive germ cell of the embryonic gonad. So germ cell tumors constitute 20% of all the ovarian neoplasms and most of them are seen in children and young adults and 95% are benign cystic teratomas. So as last topic, we discussed about the benign cystic teratoma. As you know, it is also a germ cell tumor and it which is arising from the mature elements of the germ cells. So we can see in microscopy as well as in gross picture, we can see the teeth, bone, cartilage, hair, etc. So, so this is the classification of germ cell tumors, which is divided into teratoma, disgerminoma, yolk sac tumors, and mixed germ cell tumors. Teratoma is again <coughs> immature teratoma and mature teratoma. So this is the basic classification of germ cell tumors, which is divided into disgerminoma. <coughs> Yoksak tumor, non gestational choreocarcinoma, and teratoma. These three are originating from the embryonal elements of the germ cell. So, extra embryonal elements gives rise to yolk sac tumors and non gestational choreocarcinoma. Embryonal elements gives rise to teratoma. So, dysgemonoma is most common primitive germ cell tumor. It accounts for 2% of ovarian cancers. Overall ovarian cancers, it, it accounts only for 2% and 50% of malignant ovarian germ cell tumor. All the germ, all the dysgeminomas are malignant tumors. So dysgemino is the is seen in female, in seen in ovaries, whereas seminoma is seen in testis males. They may occur in childhood, 70% occur in second and third decades. It is ovarian counterpart of testicular seminoma. Okay. So dysgemonoma can occur in patients with gonadal dysgenesis and in pseudo hermaphrodites. Most of the tumors have no endocrine function. Most dysgemonoma are unilateral tumors. They vary in size from barely visible nodules to large masses that virtually fills the abdomen. Coming to the gross features. These are more common on the right side and bilateral in 15% of cases. So most commonly they occur in right side. External surface, the ovary is enlarged, encapsulated with smooth, often bosselated surface. On cut section, we notice the solid gray white to yellow areas with force of hemorrhage and necrosis, we can see. So this is the external surface of the dysgeminoma which we can see, which is the ovaries uh, enlarged and multilobated. And we can also see the 
fallopian tube part on the external surface. If we see the cut surface, we can see multinodularity and solid in consistency. The multinodularity is due to presence of uh, septa in between the nodules and it is tan in color. Coming to the microscopic features, it is similar to that of seminoma. All the microscopic features are similar to that of seminoma and the cells also appear like seminoma and composed of large vesicular cells with clear cytoplasm, well-defined cell boundaries and centrally paced regular nuclei arranged in nesting pattern. And these nests are separated by fibrous strands infiltrated by lymphocytes. So this is the microscopic picture of the dysgeomenoma. We notice that if you notice, these are the tumor cells which are arranged in nesting pattern. And if you see these tumor cells, the dark color, blue dark color is the nucleus which is surrounded by the white color that is clear cytoplasm. So these, are, these cells are slightly enlarged with clear cytoplasm and centrally placed hyperchromatic nucleus. And these are arranged in nesting pattern. And in between these nests, we can see the fibrous septa, which is filled with the lymphocytes, usually T lymphocytes. Okay, why T lymphocytes? Because T lymphocytes has the cap capability to destroy the neoplastic cells. So coming to the prognosis, all dysgeomenomas are malignant, but degree of histologic atypia is variable. Okay. Only about one third are aggressive. Unilateral tumor that has not broken through capsule has an excellent prognosis after simple salpingo ovarectomy. Metastasis of dysgeomenoma occur more commonly in the contralateral ovary, retroperitoneal nodes, and peritoneal cavity. So the survival rate of pure dysgeomenoma is 95%, and the initial treatment of unilateral dysgeomenoma is ovarectomy. Chemotherapy is the treatment of choice if the tumor has spread beyond the ovary. So this is the specimen we can find in our laboratory. So this is the external surface. This external surface, the, the tumor is, this ovary is slightly enlarged and the external surface is smooth as well as vacillated. And this is the fallopian tube, attached fallopian tube. Okay, the cut surface we can see multinodularity. Here are many sized nodules which are surrounded which are divided by the septa and this is pale in color pale brown in color with areas of congestion we can notice so this is the nodes of that specimen So if we can compare to that of benign cystic teratoma, this dysgeomenoma is a solid tumor, whereas in case of teratoma, it is a cystic tumor. So grossly in teratoma, we can see hair, bone, and various other tissues, skin. So in case of dysgeomenoma, we cannot see solid stru cystic structures. This tumor is entirely filling the ovary, and it is a solid tumor. Okay. Microscopically, we can see the tumor cells which are arranged in nesting pattern. So in case of microscopic picture of teratoma, we can see the hair, cartilage structures, various other structures which are derived from all the three germinal layers. So we can see cartilage, hair, skin, bone, all that. Okay, if you want, you can take the screenshot of these notes. Oh, 
ovarian tumors is a very important topic for your exams so try to read it as fast as possible So this is the end of the session. You can exit the class. Yes.